Good afternoon, all. Welcome again to the 2020 SEDC virtual conference. I'm Raul Peralta, your immediate past chair. It is my pleasure to introduce to you this afternoon our next presenter, Mr. TJ Higgins. Before he begins his presentation, let me tell you a little bit about Mr. Higgins. TJ serves as the Vice President and Senior Officer, Global Chief Business Strategic Officer and Global Chief Digital Strategic Officer for Bridgestone Corporation. In addition, he serves as a Vice Chair of the Bridgestone Americas Board of Directors and as Chair of the Bridgestone China Asia Pacific Board of Directors. TJ is lucky to live in Nashville, Tennessee. Prior to accepting his current role, Mr. Higgins was group president for the Americas, tire business of Bridgestone Americas. In that role, he was responsible for leading all sales related activities across the company's consumer and commercial tire businesses. I could go on and on with uh, TJ's accomplishments including his previous roles uh, in the healthcare space. But rather than that, let me finish by telling you that uh, Mr. Higgins graduated from Lehigh University, summa cum laude with a bachelor's degree in accounting and earned his MBA at Harvard University. Having told you all that, let me tell you what you really need to know about TJ Higgins. In high school, he hosted a game show that was built around Trivial Pursuit, and he hosted it for the local public TV. In addition, in college, TJ participated in the annual Lehigh Boxing Tournament at the uh, weight of 165 pounds. He won that several years in a row. That's why uh, his Bridgestone teammates respect him like they do. Please join me in welcoming T.J. Higgins to the podium, virtually speaking. T.J., floor is yours. Thank you, Raul. Thank you for that introduction and for uh, quite the embarrassing comments about my experiences at college and high school. One thing about my uh, hosting the game show that you did not mention was that it was taken off air after only three shows. So it was on a public television show, so it wasn't all that much of a crisis, but it was, uh, you know, just... Maybe the hosting duties weren't what I, what I would hope them to be. Hence, I ended up in business. So, But I really appreciate you introducing me, and I appreciate the opportunity to talk to this crowd about mobility and about the changes and disruptions that are coming in the automotive industry. And I'm not just talking about what's happening because of COVID-19. I'm talking about revolutions in mobility, really driven by changes in society, changes in technology, and changes, I think, in the way we want to work in the ecosystem that supports mobility. Let me, if you don't mind, share just a little bit about Bridgestone to give you some context on me and on our thinking. Uh, as you may know, Bridgestone was founded in Japan in 1931. The company flourished for many years, creating routes all over the world. In 1988, Bridgestone acquired Firestone, which really significantly increased the global presence of this business. Today, Bridgestone competes in 150 countries worldwide. We have strength in many European, Asian, and American countries. Our business is 83% tire related. And that would include passenger tire, truck tire, um, con construction, aircraft tire. So the vast majority of our 32 billion US dollar sales are in the um, tire business and tire related businesses. But we also have a significant number of products in our diversified products. These include seismic oscillators, bicycles, and even golf balls. All of this is founded by our way to serve. Our way to serve is Bridgestone's thinking about how we want to serve society. We want to make sure that our management fundamentals are solid. 
But what we're really trying to do is use those fundamentals and those strengths to enhance mobility, support people and communities, and advance entrepreneurship and be the right steward for both the economy that we serve as well as the ecology that we serve. So today, Bridgestone's the number one tire and rubber company in the world. But as you know, because of disruption, because of changes, we can't sit in this type of position without evolving and neither can many of the other competitors and ecosystem partners that we look to support. We need to look not just at products, but also at services so that we contribute to the revolution that is occurring within mobility solutions as a whole. So really, the world is at a turning point and we are experiencing Urbanization, we'll see what happens after COVID-19, but resources, utilization of resources to be much more efficient than what we had. Governments, a little bit of nationalism that has come our way in recent years, will that continue? And then social inequality, the time has come to be addressed social inequality. So these, these factors coming together really are creating for all of us the need to consider what do we do next, not just what we do now and what's gotten us here, but what do we consider doing next? If you look at the economic system, values and behaviors of generations may be changing. We hear about the millennials all the time, but we're seeing even in older generations that values are continuing to be slightly adjusted. New technology is accessible. It's accessible across the globe, across socioeconomic backgrounds. And regulation. Governments around the world, as well as um, non-governmental organizations and corporations are thinking more about the full stakeholder set that we serve. So the new socio socioeconomic system is going to be affected by many of the changes that are crossing, that are happening across these domains. If you look into the people that serve anyway, us, companies, and the companies that work together, things are changing here as well. Not just what we do, but how we do it. Networks will be what needs to be emphasized in the future, not just silos. We need to think about sharing versus owning and being vertically integrated. There's so much capability and talent out there. It needs to be shared. We need to think about uploading and downloading versus just downloading, which is what we have done in the past. And we have to think about assets being much more utilized and distributed. It becomes a, a number of different business systems that we have to think about in the changing and disruptive economy that we are all facing. Now, as I think about more specifically, how Bridgestone is thinking about this ecosystem, socio and economic change, these consumer behavior change, we start thinking about what we have to do to improve the physical assets, but also the digital assets that we utilize to make the mobility system more efficient. As the tire is really the only part of a vehicle that touches the road, when it comes to a changing ecosystem of connected, autonomous, shared and electrified, we have to start thinking about how do we work together in a new and evolving system to create better benefits for society as a whole. In this presentation, we're gonna have a, a question that asks you a little bit about your viewpoints, particularly on electrification, which is having a major change in the car companies, and certainly as you've seen recently, in trucking and other parts of the ecosystem, including uh, a big announcement made recently about what are waste haul trucks moving to a hydrogen-based uh, fuel cell-driven business. So this is something that we'll be asking you about with electrification in just a moment. One thing that we're thinking about in Bridgestone is non-pneumatic tires. And the reason why we're thinking about this is because of the way mobility is changing. People don't wanna have downtime. If you get into an autonomous world and a tire loses air pressure and there is no driver, 
There could be significant consequences. Could a new technology, like a non-pneumatic tire technology, could that allow us to have more uptime, less failures, more consistency of performance on the road? As I talked to you a little bit about, um, we think about the economic as well as societal impact of our industry. A big part of the trucking industry and the tire supporting trucking industry is utilizing tire casings for their full lifetime. As you may know, the tread of a tire oftentimes gets used up faster than the carcass of the tire, the heavy weight that keeps the balloon basically, that keeps the air in. That carcass can continue on for many more years and miles than the tread can. So we use a technology called retreading which allows us to extend the life and increase the, the uh, economic as well as environmental sustainability of an asset. Today, a retread can use one third less raw materials. We can reduce CO2 emissions and we can really, really contribute to productivity. Plus, a trucking company, a fleet management company, can keep these assets, these tires, in, ut in ut utilized life longer than if they were just being used in their original state with their original tread. A second thing that we have to be thinking about, particularly in helping vehicles continue to keep moving, is data and data flow. Vehicle data, also maintenance data. And today, we're finding that vehicles are getting more and more connected. Their onboard computers are providing information to the cloud, which can be incredibly useful in trying to drive better solutions, better utilization, and better environmental sustainability practices. This integrated ecosystem moves us from hard assets into data connected with hard assets. We use a technology to help support the tires connecting to the vehicle, which then connects to the cloud and to the fleet management systems called Tirematics. This is a, um, a system that we developed in conjunction with some cloud partners that we work with, new partners for us, partners that we haven't worked with in the past. We get sensors from an outside company, we put them into our tires, we then communicate to the onboard computer, we communicate to the cloud and then back to the fleet management system to keep the fleet manager and driver updated on what's happening with their vehicle. This is a system now that isn't just on the tires, but is fully integrated with a number of different players. In fact, a number of years ago, we purchased a company called Webfleet Solutions. It was actually TomTom Tom Telematics at the time. We rebranded it as Webfleet Solutions. Webfleet Solutions is a heavily European-based telematics firm. Webfleet captures all kinds of very important and usable data to help with the efficiency and effectiveness of trucking and even passenger car fleets. It helps with maintenance and with tire management as well. A place where we find this type of data flow critically important is in the mining solutions area. Those of you who have any experience with mining know that these incredibly large vehicles carrying tons of materials at fairly high speeds only ride on six tires. If those tires go down, that vehicle goes down and the throughput of the entire system stops. So we need to manage the tire through data and tire rotations and maintenance. So the solutions focus, which in our case, we just purchased a new company called um, Transense. We purchased Transense to help us better capture data coming off of the tires and off the mining vehicles. That data gets put into a calculation that goes into our solution center. And this is very interesting because we're actually, we now have a physical solution center on a mine site in Australia, where we work in conjunction with multiple other parties to make sure that we are collaborating 
to help the mining operator be as efficient and effective as possible, utilizing resources, increasing uptime, and reducing costs for the entire network. This system also has a lot of applicability in the aircraft industry. As you may know, a aircraft like an Airbus A380 has 22 tires on it, carrying 560 tons. Speeds that vary widely on takeoff and landing, and of course, temperatures that range significantly. The tires need for the safety of all and for the efficiency of the product to work well. Heavy loads, crosswinds, which create different lateral forces and huge temperature gaps make a, a, the heft of the tire and the ability of the tire to sustain, provide data, get proper maintenance, keep the entire economic system of the aircraft engine updated. These are critical things for us to think about as we go more into solutions instead of just selling physical assets like tires. So I would suggest to you, as we think about all the disruption that's happening across the ecosystem that we serve, we have to start to think about co-creating value. It's not one company working with someone else to sell an asset, but rather it's a series of companies working together with society's best interests, with customers' needs, and with partnership integration. By bringing it together this way, as this world that we live in continues to adjust and need more co-creation, we'll be ready for them and we'll be ready for each other as better partners to create economic development. Thank you for allowing me to share a little bit of my thoughts on how Bridgestone is participating in the disruptions that are occurring here within the mobility space. And I would certainly be happy to address any questions, comments, uh, thoughts that you have. And uh, again, I appreciate you including me and including Bridgestone in this really important event. Thank you, TJ. This is the time where we ask those of you who have questions to please send them in uh, and I'll be happy to share them with him. Um, There's an awful lot of information that he has shared with us and I'm going to ask a couple of questions, but I hope that there is some interest from the audience to, uh, to move this along. TJ, I'm gonna ask you the first question and that is um, change is a domino effect, as you well yeah. know. How do you see your customers, trucking, uh, OEMs, passenger OEMs, retailers, dealers, reacting to the, the, the changes that you've, uh, you've just highlighted for us? Uh, you know, Ralph, you know, change is affecting all of us, and it's throughout the systems. We're seeing a lot of uh, pressure on original equipment manufacturers to find ways to be more environmentally sustainable to find new tools and techniques to provide more efficiency, more uptime, and use less fuel, use less natural resources while creating all of this benefit. I think by working together at an earlier stage, we're starting to see that all the elements of a vehicle, if we're working towards a common objective, can be integrated a little bit more seamlessly to allow at that original equipment development, we can see some uh, good opportunities for us to create a better outcome when the, when the vehicle is being designed before it begins its manufacturing and then um, utilization period. You know, in the passenger market, this COVID-19 crisis that we are all continuing to endure has really created changes in e-commerce. We have seen a significant increase in the number of tires being purchased online. In the past, we saw a lot of searching, maybe 85, 90% of tire purchases started with an online, uh, an online search, but that's not how they ended. They would end up with someone calling or going to a store or working with a professional to make the right selection. That has changed a little bit. We're seeing e-commerce sales, particularly in passenger tires, up about 40% versus pre-COVID highs. So it's a significant change in how interested people are in, in actually getting tires right online 
right through an e-commerce solution. And then when they come to the physical store, they want to have a touchless experience or limited interactions, more speed, more delivery faster so that they can get back to what they need to do, but that they also can keep themselves with limited uh, physical interaction with store personnel. So we're seeing changes all over the business and we're seeing trucking, passenger, as well as original equipment, all finding different systems and tools that make us all start to say, we have to work in a different uh, mode than we have in the past. Very good, thank you. Any questions from the audience? I'll ask another one, but I don't wanna dominate the conversation. Hearing none, let's talk about the, the new or your emerging customers or suppliers. How are they looking to support the new mobility needs that you've discussed? Uh, well, this is a place where I think all of us need to be paying an awful lot of attention. Um, the agility that's being shown by, maybe I'll call them younger companies. I shared that Bridgestone was formed in 1931. Many of the customers we serve, the Caterpillars and John Deere's, the uh, Toyotas and General Motors, they have been around decades, if not longer. And these new emerging competitors work in a very different way. Incredibly agile, very software driven. They look at partnerships as being the way to get everything done. Instead of buying and vertically integrating, they want to work across the system and utilize the smartest and best people available to most rapidly advance their technologies. So I think many of us, large companies as well as small companies, have to think about a new way of working with a new set of competitors that are much faster, that are very software driven, meaning that they're looking at launch and improve versus launch perfect and never touch for 20 years and leverage the asset that you put in there. And I think for, for people you know, who, who are trying to deal in a new ecosystem, there's an advantage if you're much more agile, if you're looking to move faster, so we have to look to adjust. We have to look to find a way to work better in this changing socioeconomic and business environment that, that really looks to software and to speed of solutions as being a competitive advantage. Um, you, you talked about um, new changing tires, the, the actual components. Does your organization reach out to the uh, manufacturers of new vehicles, whether they're electric or, or, or regular gasoline driven, and talk about how to, how to, to, uh, how to connect the non-pneumatic technology to the vehicle itself, and, and what's that collaboration like? Yes, yes, we are, I will say, we're still in relatively early days of this, but that is a very big change because the, the original equipment manufacturers in the new world, these emerging competitors, they're much more worried about the information they can capture from a tire and put into a solution for a system. That's what they worry about. They're not as worried about the physical performance of the tire. Dealing with some competitors that have been around for many years and customers that have been around for many years, it's about product design and product superiority and product performance. These newer um, competitors, these newer customers, look and say, you're the tire expert. I expect you to be able to deliver the tire expertise. What I need from you is to know what's happening. So that means capturing that data at the appropriate time frames, whether it be by sensors, by automated um, you know, tire pressure monitoring systems, they want that data constantly flowing into an algorithm that helps them and also whoever is owning or utilizing this vehicle to understand much more about what that vehicle is doing and how it's performing. So optimal performance becomes a much more uh, interesting phenomenon among these emerging players versus you, know, you tune it, develop it, design it, and then sell it. And then that's it's the secondary market that serves the, the keeping the product moving well or the vehicle moving well. 
you know, the new OEMs are thinking about it very differently. They're thinking about is I want to be in continuous contact with the user and I want to create more loyalty and connection through data and information transfer than, you know, just buy an asset and I'll talk to you in three years when, you know, you're looking to replace it. So it's a, I think it's a really important, and, and, and I think for older for companies like ours that have been established for many years, it is critically important that we think differently about what's coming our way. And that means changing how we hire, how we train, who we work with as partners, and then who we work with in the outside ecosystem. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Um, you mentioned COVID-19 and, and its impact. Um, how do you see it changing? If you want to add anything to what you've already said, uh, the yeah. mobility of, of the marketplace as we see it today and as much as we can predict in the future. Well, you know, this is one that I think, Raul, we're going to have to watch. This is very interesting. One of the other areas, so e-commerce for passenger tire became very um, a growth engine. But the second thing that became a huge growth engine is what we call last mile delivery or these vans that many of you may see in your neighborhoods that actually are pushing products that last mile from a warehouse or from a distribution center to a home or to a business. We've seen about a 30% increase, and we only know it from tire demand, but about a 30% increase in tire demand from these last mile vehicle services. And my, you know, if this holds, if we come out of this pandemic and people say, wow, this is actually pretty good. I like to get my goods and services delivered versus getting and going to a physical location to get them all the time. Or maybe they don't do it all the time, but they do it just more often. That is going to be a very big change. And last mile delivery, uh, it could be a revolutionary area for all of us to think about how do we better serve this new dynamic of efficiency that's going to be needed. And, you know, they're good. The, the last mile delivery, as I understand it, can be up to 35 or 40 percent of the total cost of physical distribution of a product. So that's a tremendous cost savings opportunity for consumers, for the customers that we serve, and then also for the entire ecosystem efficiency. So I, I think there's a uh, I think there's a lot to watch in does this level sustain? Does it even grow further as people become more and more uh, accepting of receiving things at their home? So I guess we should start seeing some distribution centers uh, coming up in the Southeast for Bridgestone, correct? Well, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna try to be ready to help out. And, and I'll also say, but, but we're thinking, we're trying to think differently as you may have heard. And this is where, you know, I think all of us need to think um, we, we formed an alliance with one of our competitors. Um, Bridgestone and Goodyear actually came together to create a distribution system that we hope has more efficiency, which lowers costs for the entire network and, and system of retailers. And you know those types of partnerships, even with competitors, to drive efficiency and effectiveness for an overall system can be really important. So I, I think those are... Uh, you know, those are areas for all of us to watch. What are those new partnerships? How do they make the whole system better? Yeah, it's the way of the future. Uh, yeah. <laughs> competitors are, are friends in the future. Any That's questions? Right. Did, we, uh, did we do the poll question? We, we did not. We need to touch on? You, you, okay. you, you mind if I maybe make a comment? On it? So I'm looking at the polling answers now. And, and the question was, uh, when do you think EVs will, suppress, will surpass 10% of passenger vehicles. Today in the United States, you know, they're somewhere in the two and a half percent, three percent range. They are growing rapidly, 40% per year. So I think it's very interesting to see, uh, you know, uh, at least in our audience, um, 2027 uh, looks like a, an area, I think 10%, you know, at least, Raul, you, it's hard to put numbers on all these things, but that could be a tipping point where it becomes really critical that we think about how um, how to serve these electric vehicles because they are different ecosystem partners than an internal combustion engine that needs parts, that needs maintenance, that needs oil. These are battery operated with less moving parts. If they're more efficient, but they're incredibly heavy. They, they put a toll on, on roads, they put a toll on tires. 
they're, they're going to have a charging infrastructure that's going to be very different. So if we reach that, that tipping point in seven years, wow, that starts to, uh, you know, really, really make us think about how do we have to change our infrastructure uh, and support systems in the mobility space to be thinking EV electric first. Very good. I do not, I have not received any questions uh, on the medium uh, extended to me. So I'd like to ask you, TJ, to, to please give us your last thoughts uh, before we close this session out. Well, well, for, first of all, uh, thank you. Uh, I, I appreciate, Raul, your questions and, and talking with me to the entire team. I appreciate being invited and that Bridgestone was there. Unfortunately, I was not in Nashville today, which given the, the uh, economic, or sorry, the COVID situation is very unusual for me not to be in Nashville. I happened to be taking my son to college. So I appreciate you letting me take this uh, event and, and share with you from a, a hotel here in Louisiana. So I, uh, I sincerely appreciate that. I, I hope everybody thinks a little bit about how do we become better partners? How do we think about integrating more, about using the expertise and capabilities of a broader set of ecosystem partners? You know, not just thinking about doing things on our own, but really doing things together to speed a solution and to advance the superiority and the ability of, it, of creating something better, something faster for, for you know, basically society's benefit, as well as, of course, customers and our companies. Very good. TJ, thank you for giving us a chance to get to know you a little bit better. Thank uh, you. Bro. Next time we get together, I want to hear more about your boxing career. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you for, yeah, long, thank long you time for ago. Your, uh, <laughs> your, view, your viewpoints and your perspectives. Um, we really do thank appreciate you. it. And I'm sorry we can't be together during this, but this is the best thing going. So uh, I know that we have a break scheduled at four o'clock. We're a little early. So with that, I'd like to... Uh, to end this session and thank all for your attention and we will be back at 4.15. Thank you, TJ. Thank you, Rob. Thank you.